this, so this is actually what I was thinking because what I try to do when I do these teachings, what did I learn the most about this week or what was I most reflective of this week? And it's, so it's knowing when to quit. And you can quit in a couple ways. You can hold, you can pivot, or you can stop. Ultimately, you decide if you're gonna live or not. Am I just gonna get through life or am I gonna live? Because it really, it's a fucking choice. I mean, you, you literally decide that. And some people decide it when they're 70 and it's too late. You can hold, you can pivot, or you can stop. So we don't have the resources right now and it would just spread people thin and we don't have stability right now. So it would be silly to keep going. So we just roll, roll, hold next to it and we'll get going on that again when we have the resources and have stability back over there, which is gonna happen or else. You can pivot. Ben and I started custom offsets on cars. I don't know if you know that, but the first vehicle ever loaded custom offsets is vehicle number three in the gallery. And it is a Cadillac CTS V on Vossens because that's what I had at the time. I didn't even own a truck when I started custom offsets. I bought one to fit in and it was an avalanche, which didn't help with fitting in. <laughs> Sorry, totally forgot we have a new one. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Pivot. So pivot is when we saw that trucks were loading to the site and cars would not, they absolutely refused to. We pivoted and said, fuck cars, we'll just go trucks then. And we started hanging out in the truck forums, truck Instagram pages, pulled all the trucks in, humanly possible. Custom Offsets is now a truck company. That is a massive pivot because we already had our mind made up what we were gonna do and we just totally flipped it. After 15 pitches of different ways to do it, we landed on this one and we totally pivoted and headed a different direction. So pivots are super popular. And so an example of that would have been um, trucks. Stop, stop would be, um, what were some of my really dumb ideas, Ben? Wow, thanks everybody. So, so my, favorite is, my favorite business of all time was my first one. Well, it's actually my third one. And we developed a system where you could go online in Milwaukee and just say, I want to find a chiropractor within 15 miles, book an appointment. I'm a new patient. And it was just booked. You pick the doctor, read his profile, pick the time available on his calendar and show up. Our first clinic, we, one of the first five we pitched, one of them signed up. Then like seven companies came out with the same thing for free. And then we're just upselling advertising, but they were linking them to the clinics, which Ben taught us he would have to go to every clinic because they all use different software and write custom software for a week at every single clinic just to give it away for free and maybe sell some advertising. So we limped it along for like a year losing 12 bucks a month. When we realized that everybody was giving it away and that we couldn't possibly scale it and it just wasn't gonna happen one day, we said, okay, it's time and just shut it off and all took a $10,000 loss. Wrote it off on our taxes and moved on. So that's an example. Sometimes you just gotta quit and it's not gonna work out. Um, same thing happens with hiring and firing. I mean, I hire very quickly. I basically go on character, but that also means that you then have to perform. Otherwise we've got to part ways because it wasn't a good match. So I think I'm slowing down on that right now and I'm being more deliberate in explaining to people the risk that they're taking by working here. Because if you, don't, if you can't do it, we're gonna part ways. And I know that's something that Gary Vee speaks of a lot is that um, he hires very quickly, but he also parts ways if it's not gonna work out and just can't spend the time dwelling on it. You just it has to keep moving. So I think that's, that's an example with businesses, with people, with everything, but know that we don't quit until you quit. And every single person we've worked with very closely and said, here's what you cannot do. How can we help you do that? And if we can't, then we have to go separate ways. If we can, then we can make this happen. Does that make sense? The question.
just be rapping, making it happen. Fuck being stagnant, bitch. I'm Aladdin. I'm on Atlanta, recording the magic. Travel is tragic. Get up a savage. I'm on the bright side. Got the bright mob with the bright guys at the right time. Get my bread up. That's white Ryan. It's my grind, so it's my shine. My time is my time. I say it once and I say it twice. Now my time is my time. Ain't fuck around. I ain't playing nice. My time is my time. Can't give it up. Gotta roll the dice. My time is my time. Like white and rice. I'm so precise. Looking at these different views. Damn, it feel like paradise. Fuck up in a pair of shoes. Put my mom in paradise. I don't even hear these dudes. Catch me taking their advice. Can't just name me or defend me. Kinda feel like Jerry Rice. You want them in the field. Better know how to pitch me. It's risky when you're with me. Like Bill and Mrs. Lewinsky. You're addition, my opinion. Fuck government politicians. If you with them, I ain't tripping. Not giving in to deficient. Don't never think they under you. They pick you up and fumble you. They waiting for the crumble. Like I'm the true you and bubble you. Ask you when they trouble you. They hit me up like what it do. Like why the fuck my first three songs start with double. I just be rapping, making it happen. Fuck being stagnant, bitch. I'm a loud and I'm on Atlanta recording the magic. Travel is tragic. Get up a savage. I'm on the bright side. Got the bright mind with the bright guys at the right time. And my bread up. That's white rye and it's my grind. So it's my shine. My time is my time. I say it once and I say it twice. My time is my time. Ain't fuck around. I ain't playing nice. My time is my time. Can't give it up. Gotta roll the dice. My time. It's my time like white and rice, I'm so precise You speak my name like you living in my life, huh? You waking up and... Okay, here's what's going on. This is a working fun trip. So almost all of you have work you can do from Vegas and you're expected to do it. So Brad, definitely have to keep up on your emails. Try to batch your phone calls. So. We'll end up at the hotel at like 10.30 and you'll be hungry. So everybody will probably just scatter, grab something to eat. And then I would recommend going to bed early because Wednesday, John knows the deal. Wednesday, we're all gonna be dressed the same. So we're gonna have the Fitman Inc. guys all wearing the, the Fitman Inc. shirt. And then we'll have custom offsets all wearing a custom offset shirt. I'm gonna decide which one. That will be the plan. We'll all be dressed the same because we wanna make a presence on Wednesday and show them that we came with 16 guys. And that will be one of the biggest groups there. You'll notice that people don't do a good job of staying together and making kind of a presence. And then what's gonna happen is like really early Wednesday, I'll probably leave before you guys do with whoever my camera crew is. And we're gonna end up parading around like Gear Alloy and some of the booths that are dying to get us there that want us there early before people are in the way and they can get good solid videos. And then we'll probably regroup with you guys um, when you show up around 9, 9.30. I would recommend being there and we'll tell you what time we're gonna meet. You have to be there. You have to meet up with us and you have to spend most of Wednesday with us. We're gonna travel as a group Wednesday, go see wheels, wheels, wheels. There's one building that's all wheels. So you could bounce between groups or wander off in the wheel hall, but we're gonna live in South Hall, first floor that first day, because it's all wheels. And that's where we wanna get to know as many people as we can be seen as a big group. More people will talk to us if we're in a big group. That's just how it works because they know we're not a first time SEMA goer that's not gonna buy anything. They'll recognize who we are. So that's kind of how Wednesday's gonna play out all the way until 5.30ish because it's requirement that you show up on Thursday and then we're gonna hang out, also wear the same thing and then go and look at vehicles. And then we'll probably split up a lot and then have groups of people and then regroup for lunch. And we'll do a lot on group chat probably, so just be watching that. Um, it's huge. I've done 60% of it was the most I ever did, we estimated, and we spent three days walking nonstop until we could hardly walk. So Wednesday, you'll be expected to answer your emails, probably just plop down somewhere. Highly recommend bringing your laptop. Keep her moving. Keep her moving. So Friday morning, do whatever you want Friday. I don't care if you go to SEMA, I don't care what you do. Cool. Does somebody have a question? Brad's just excited, he wants to leave now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I,